Now today on the bench I've got a couple of uh, security cameras. I recently picked up a uh, security camera kit with the uh, box and uh, two uh, pan and tilt cameras and two fixed cameras. The two fixed cameras already have a uh, SMA connector so I can upgrade the antennas on those if I want to. But these uh, pan and tilt ones don't. They've got the two uh, 2.5 dB of gain uh, omnidirectional antennas on here. But um, I want to upgrade these so I can use these 5 dB antennas and possibly even a directional antenna. It just depends when I get everything set up how well it communicates with the uh, you know the uh, box itself. I also have to upgrade the antennas on the box because again uh, they're fixed antennas like these ones here but uh, I'm going to be concentrating on upgrading uh, this here today on the bench. Should be pretty straightforward. I've got these little pigtails here uh, that have a high rose connector on the end and I'm kind of presuming that uh, there would be a high rose connector in here if not I'll just strip this at the end and you know we'll have to solder directly onto the uh, PCB board itself but uh, I'm kind of confident that they are going to be high rose connectors um, so I don't know what you know I'm just guessing what's on the inside of these uh, they do have an FCC number which is fake it's not uh, on the FCC website so I can't get any uh, internal photographs but uh, it should be pretty straightforward and that's what I'm going to be doing today I'm not going to be making a series of videos on installing security cameras uh, this is the first time I've done this so you know making a video on me fumbling around um, will be pretty pointless there's enough videos on YouTube with people uh, pretending they're experts on things but we're just going to be concentrating on upgrading the antennas because I think that's you know what kind of sets um, the price point apart from these you know and uh, if you do get this and you want to upgrade it slightly so it connects wirelessly with uh, your box in your home then upgrading the antennas is something should be pretty straightforward to do on this camera although it might look you know a little bit complex from the outside it's pretty straightforward really now the main construction of this looks pretty straightforward we've got uh, three Phillips screws here holding this uh, kind of back plate on here we've also got four Phillips screws holding the uh, ball of the main camera together the uh, circuit board and everything else will be in here this is probably gears under here uh, we've got the two antennas here with the you can see the coax here the black coax and then some gray coax going in there so again that tells me that's either going to be a high rose connection or a soldered connection we've got the uh, outlets here for the uh, power reset switch and communication over ethernet i believe but uh, yeah it's pretty straightforward i'm going to uh, remove these three Phillips screws first get an idea of the cables that are running through here and then uh, take a look at the main part down in here now I've got the back off as you can see and we've got the first disappointment with this particular design and here you can see we've got this black wire here which is uh, coax is just a length here and it's stuck down with this tape here not connected to anything so it looks like that this antenna here is a completely bogus fake antenna. This looks like the active one and this is just a dead antenna for show. We've seen that before with Chinese products. Didn't expect this because it is advertised as two, uh, you know, omnidirectional antennas. So the kind of saying, oh, it's got better coverage than the single ones. A little bit disappointed, but yeah, I'm disappointed actually that's I don't actually leave a lot of Amazon reviews but I'm going to leave a review with this just to let people know it hasn't got two antennas that you know that's not on at all but we'll keep going I mean it could possibly be that uh, we've got a high rose connector on the uh, main board that's not populated and if that's so then we can populate it so we've got the two antennas but uh yeah, I'm kind of thinking there possibly won't be, but we shall see when we get this back cover off. Now, here's the uh, main circuit board that we need to get access to for the modification. And as you can see, we've just got the one high rose connector here. We haven't got a uh, second unpopulated one. So this board is in no way designed to have two 
antennas connected to it so the other antenna is completely bogus and fake and it's, it's probably there for symmetry but uh, like I said the advertisement does make it clear that it does have two antennas and that's why it's better than the competition but uh, yeah it is a high rose connector so there's no soldering involved with this one so it's a pretty straightforward modification it also has a uh, SD card there so it can be a standalone camera as well and I think you can connect to this uh, with your uh, smartphone on its own without the control box that I've got so yeah I mean you do get quite a bit for your money when you think about how much these things cost I think this one on its own on Amazon is around 50 pounds maybe uh, 60 pounds I'm not quite sure but uh, yeah, yeah that claiming it's got two antennas when it quite clearly hasn't um, it just winds me up so I've got the macro lens on so we can take a closer look at this and this is mainly for people who might come across this video on my channel not my normal subscribers I have uh, talked about high rose connectors previously but uh, if you've never come across anything like this, they are very, very delicate. They're not designed to be continuously uh, connected, disconnected. Um, they're only rated in the factory for up to 50 uh, connections. The reason for that is they are very, very fragile. The walls of uh, the uh, high rose connector itself are very, very thin, very, very fragile. The uh, high rose connectors themselves again have a wall on them. Let's let the camera focus. And that again is very, very fragile. And if you don't get them lined up when you press to connect them, uh, you can easily bend those side walls. So you just need to be very, very careful. But at least we don't have to solder this uh, so it makes this modification a lot easier. Has got a little bit of glue on this high rose connector as well. So. Uh, you want to try and peel that off the best you can before you uh, remove the high rose connector and don't try and rip it out either in this kind of motion try and lift it straight up if you can just uh, get some tweezers and possibly something else to kind of help you do that and that way you've got less chance of uh, bending those side walls but yeah they are small connectors but uh, it does make it a lot easier that we don't have to solder now I have to admit we're back a few days later because the little pigtails that I had here in the lab uh, I've got a few of these ones a little bit too short these are 200 millimeters so I had to go out and order which have arrived today these ones which are 300 millimeters long so this is going to be long enough to modify our camera here on the bench now what I'm looking at before I uh, connect this up is I'm trying to figure out how to mount this now I'm going to remove this antenna this is the active antenna by the way the only one that is connected this is the fake one and I'm also thinking where I'm positioning this on my house so this side is going to be the best side um, it's going to have line of sight with the uh, box itself the receiving box this one is going to be blocked a little bit by the corner of the wall so this is the one that I want to be active and I think what I'm going to do to get uh, the pigtail through here without uh, dismantling any more of this camera is I'm going to cut it off at the bottom here and then uh, use a little bit of tape to connect this to the end of that one and pull it through and hopefully that way I'll be able to connect this up without removing or dismantling any more of the camera itself so I'm going to remove this antenna and then uh, we're going to look at the hole that's left behind where we have to modify that hole to fit this i don't know yet sometimes you can get lucky but uh, i'm just going to remove this antenna we'll also take a look at this antenna as well and just see what db it is because i'm going to be replacing it with one of these you can see it's considerably bigger this is a 5 db omnidirectional um these are also claimed to be 5 db but you can see they're a little bit shorter so let's take a look so now that we've got the other antenna removed, um, the hole is just a little bit uh, too big to normally attach the SMA connector using the nuts that come with it. So what I'm going to do is have it protruding about this far out and epoxy it in place from behind. And uh, that way it's held in quite easily. And epoxy, if we ever want to remove this, uh, replace it if it gets broken or corroded, damaged in any way. 
Um, we can just heat the epoxy up with a hairdryer and then remove it. It's pretty straightforward to do that. So a little bit of epoxy in there, I think, and uh, just have that held in place with the epoxy. I don't think, uh, you know, we need to put anything more substantial than that in there. Now I'm going to try and pull this through. Um, I was going to use some masking tape and some electrical tape that I've got, but it just keeps uh, pulling itself off. So what I've done is I've soldered the back braid of uh, this coax onto the back of the uh, high rose connector so we're not interfering with how the high rose connector affects in any way just a little bit of solder on there so then we've got a nice uh, you know strong connection so hopefully fingers crossed we can pull this through so that was uh, pretty straightforward at one bit I didn't think it would work it took quite a little bit of uh, wiggling so a little bit of patience needed uh, to do this but uh, it took about five minutes to be honest with you um, a lot better than uh, taking everything to pieces on the camera so uh, yeah I mean if you've got some really strong tape um, do it that way or just a little bit of solder on the back of the connector and solder the uh, coax onto that and you've got a really strong connection then and uh, it won't break but yeah much better than taking the camera to pieces and there is the connector clicked back in place. A uh, little bit fiddly to try and do this on camera. I was going to try and uh, do it with the macro lens on so you could see, but you just need to come downwards with a little bit of downward pressure. Use something like a uh, little screwdriver to apply a little bit of downward force there and it'll just click into place. Now, I just want to clarify something that I've done here because uh, I've uh, uploaded a couple of videos around these security cameras and uh, in particular the uh, reception box, the, the main control unit and uh, storage of the camera uh, footage. And in that video I did a similar modification using these high connectors and I did say in that video uh, there was no need to put any kind of hot glue around the connector like they had originally, I uh, had to peel it all off. But uh, with this one, because the coax that I'm using here is much thicker, I have put a little bit of hot glue around here, just so when I'm manipulating it back into the case, uh, because this is thicker, it doesn't push it up, because that's, you know, you, you can run the risk of doing that. Um, if there was something that I could uh, loop this around to add a little bit of strain relief onto the main board, then I would do that instead. But in this instance, I put a little bit of hot glue on there, just so we don't break the contact. So here we are with the SMA bulk connector then, just a little bit of epoxy, just allow that to set. Here we go then, this is the uh, finished article with the uh, modification on there for the SMA connector. So now we can add our own antennas, something a little bit more beefier. Um, as I said during the video, I was surprised to find that this antenna is a fake one on the opposite side. Just going to leave it in place, I'm not going to mess around removing it or anything. But it's just disappointing, but yeah, we have seen that kind of thing before with Chinese products. And of course, if you want to add something a little bit beefier now than uh, a simple omnidirectional antenna, you can add a panel like I have done uh, with this one here. Don't know if I'm going to need them yet. I think I probably need something like this on one of the cameras. Uh, one of them is quite close, so I should be fine with uh, one of these. But it just gives you uh, different options to uh, upgrade, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And something that's uh, even further away, you can always add something like a uh, cantenna to it, or possibly even a Yagi as well. As I said, doing a modification like this just gives you options. I will put a uh, review on the Amazon. Uh, it's Amazon that I purchased these from. And I will point out to other people that it only has got the one antenna, not the two. It's got a fake antenna. I think that's rather important, especially when uh, the company has it in the specs for these cameras. And it's one of the things that uh, they make great reference to, that it has got two antennas for extra range and extra uh, connect connectivity. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, a little bit disappointing. But uh, if you do have a go at uh, upgrading your cameras or doing something similar to this, then please let us know in the comments and uh, hopefully uh, you'll give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.